and we're going to talk about trig functions of any angle. So, so far we've, we've limited ourselves a little bit to talking about trig functions of angles on the unit circle. So we, we know something about the unit circle and trig functions in a right triangle. So we said when we're in a right triangle, our angle is acute. So we're, we're talking about an acute angle. Today we want to extend that and, and figure out how we find the sine, cosine, tangent, etc. of any angle. So what we're going to do is we'll draw a set of coordinate axes. And we're going to say our angle is in standard position. So I'm going to say theta in standard position. So our initial side is the x-axis, and our terminal side is just somewhere out here. So I'll draw my angle in red. And I'm just drawing it in the first quadrant, just to make my drawing a little easier. But our angle, we don't have to be in the first quadrant. So there's theta. And I'm going to drop down here to the x-axis. So this side of the triangle is going to be x. This side of the triangle is going to be y, and we're not necessarily on the unit circle. So we're at some point x, y in the plane. The length of this side of the triangle we're going to call r. And r, how, do we, how are we going to find r? I hear, hear a little whispers. <laughs> so we're, we're using the Pythagorean theorem, right? So we get the square root of x squared plus y squared. I can hear this with the squares. The squares, plus the squares. Um, and now we can now we can write our trig functions of this angle, following from what we did with the unit circle, following from what we did with uh, right triangles. We're going to say that the sine of our angle is y over r. The cosine of my angle is x over r. The tangent of the angle is y over x. Cotangent would be x over y. The secant of our angle is going to be r over x, and the cosecant is going to be r over y. And we're, when we're dividing by x or y, we're saying x and y is not 0. So these would be undefined when y is 0, these would be undefined when x is 0. So this lets us find the trig functions anywhere on the plane. We don't have to have an acute angle we don't have to be on the unit circle. So this lets us find our sine and cosine for, for any angle. So let's take a look at a couple of kinds of problems that we're going to, that we're going to, you might be asked to solve, or the kinds of things that we'll be, that we'll look at with these things. So let's say that we have the point um, 4, negative 3. is on the terminal side of our angle. And we're going to say that we want to find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I suggest on these kinds of problems is just draw a little sketch. So here's my point, 4, negative 3. Here's my angle in standard position. And we want the sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, this would be very easy if we were on the unit circle because these points would just give us our sine and our cosine, but because we're not on the unit circle, 
we have another step that we have to take. So we need to find, we need to find R. So R, we need to find the length of this little side. So R in this case is going to be, what, is it, what does it turn out to be? Anybody see it without, without calculating? Five. This is going to be a three, four, five triangle. This side is three. This side is four. So our hypotenuse is going to be five. R is going to be five. If we weren't sure, we could say R equals the square root of four squared plus negative plus negative three squared. which is the square root of 25, which comes out to be 5. So we have r equals 5. Well, now we can, now we can write our, now we can solve our problem. We have sine of theta. What's, what's sine of theta gonna, going to be? Negative 3 over 5, because y is negative. And the, the picture helps you remember that as well. We're in the fourth quadrant, so we know that y has to be negative. Sine of theta is negative 3 over 5. Cosine theta, 4 fifths, 4 over 5. And tangent theta, 2 oh, thank you. And the tangent of theta is going to be negative three-fourths. And I could, if I asked, if I were asked to, or if I needed to, find the other, my other three, um, my other three trig functions, just by finding the reciprocals of these. So I can get all six trig functions from these. So questions on that example? All right, so before we go on to the next example, because we are talking about an angle, any angle, we, we often, we end up with something like here where we, where we have uh, a number and we need to know is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative. So we're going to use what we know about the, about the unit circle, about the coordinates, to decide which, which trig function is going to be positive or negative in which quadrant. So let's draw a little, a little diagram here. And if you have, if you drew a unit circle uh, you, or on your radian, the snowman, you might want to add, you could add this information there to help you out when you're using radian, the snowman. So in quadrant one, X and Y are both positive. So what, which trig functions are going to be positive? All of them, all positive. So in quadrant one, all the trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, which coordinate is positive? Y. So which trig functions are going to be positive? Sine theta and cosecant theta are going to be positive. All the rest are going to be negative. So anything that has to do with the um, x coordinate that has the x coordinate in there is going to be negative. In the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. So what does that leave for our positive trig functions? Tangent theta and cotangent theta are going to be positive, and all the rest are negative. And then finally in the fourth quadrant, we have the x-coordinate positive. So which functions are going to be positive? Cosine and secant theta, and the rest? Are negative. So often you'll be given a problem that te that tells you something about a trig function 
and the sine, the plus, positive or negative, whether the uh, another trig function is positive or negative. So that problem is telling you about the quadrant that your angle is in. So it tells you whether you're going to have to have a positive or negative in front of the x or the y, or which, which trig functions are going to be positive and negative. So let's look at an example using, using this idea. So let's say that we have, um, we have the cosine, the cosine of theta, equals three-fifths. And tangent theta is less than zero. And we want to find the sine and the cos tangent of theta. So a couple of things to keep in mind about problems like this. When we're given our, our trig function in terms of a ratio, we can always think of this as the sides of a right triangle. So we can always draw a little right triangle. We can find our missing side. So these problems, whenever you have your trig function as a ratio, you can always find the third side of your triangle. And in fact, you can always think of your if you have a sine, cosine, tangent, whatever, you can always think of that as a ratio. Because if it's written as a decimal, we, like we did yesterday, we said 0.3 was 3 tenths. So we can write that as a ratio. So we can always find the third side of our triangle, given this. But let's, let's look at the, let's start to set this one up. Uh, if the cosine is 3 fifths, cosine is positive, tangent is negative. So the cosine is positive tells us which coordinate is positive x is positive, tangent is negative, so what quadrant do we have to be in? Fourth quadrant. We have to be in fourth quadrant. So what I suggest, it can be helpful. Let's draw a little, let's draw a little angle. We're down here in the fourth quadrant. Here's my angle. And the sides of the triangle, so I'm going to draw a little triangle there. Cosine is which side over which side? X over R. So this side is going to be 3, and this side is going to be 5. So what does this turn out to be? It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Um, so the sine of theta is going to be what? Negative four fifths because we're in the fourth quadrant. So I could put a negative here to remind myself I'm going downwards. So the sine of theta is negative four fifths. And the cotangent of theta? Negative three-fourths. Cotangent is x over y. So negative three-fourths. So this is kind of like our last problem except the x's and the y's were turned around. If we didn't, if it wasn't a three-four-five triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the fourth, the fourth side, the third side of the triangle. If you guys start finding the four sides of triangles, let me know because then we're on to something. Um, <clears throat> so anytime you have your trick functions in a ratio, you can draw a triangle and you can find the third side of that triangle. Use the information that you have to figure out what quadrant you're in, and then you can find all of your trig ratios. Questions on that? So really not much different than what we've been doing with right angle right right angle trigonometry. We're just moving our triangle around and putting a positive and negative on some of the sides. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is reference angles. Reference angles are something that can simplify our lives a little bit.
And I think the easiest way to easiest way to, to talk about reference angles is we're going to draw a picture. So here's my axes, and we're talking about an angle in standard position, so I'm going to draw some angles here. And I'm just drawing random, random angles. Our reference angle is the angle between the terminal side of our angle and the x-axis. Not the positive x-axis, just the x-axis. So those are our reference angles. Over here on this side, these would be the reference angles. So the reference angle is just the angle between our terminal side and the x-axis. It doesn't have to be the positive x-axis. The nice thing about using reference angles is reference angles are always then going to be acute angles. And then if we're, if we're talking about our unit circle, all we have to think about is our first, our first quadrant on the unit circle because we'll always have an acute angle. The only thing that we have to keep track of is the sign, the positive or negative, of our trig functions. So the trig functions of reference angles are going to be the same. They're the same as the trig functions of the original angles. Except for maybe a plus or a minus. we just have to adjust our sign depending on which quadrant we're in. Now before we, do, before we do any examples, let's look at this diagram and decide how we find reference angles. So in the first quadrant, reference angles are easy. The reference angle is the same as our regular an angle. In the second quadrant, if we have a, an angle in standard position, how are we going to find our reference angle? subtract it from 180. This is 180, so we would do 180 degrees minus theta, or in radians it would be pi minus theta. That would give us our reference angle. We're just finding how far we have to go to get to the x-axis. In the third quadrant, how would we, how would we figure out our reference angle? So that would give us the angle here. We want the angle here. So our, our, re, our, our angle is going to be larger than 180. So we want to figure out how far we have to go this way. There we go, very good. Theta minus 180. Or pi minus, or sorry, theta minus pi. So we're just figuring out how far we have to go backwards to get back to the back to the x-axis. So to find our x, our reference angle in the third quadrant, this is what we do. And fourth quadrant, we're going to to this line. So when we're all the way around here, what do we call this angle? We go all the way around. What's the angle from here around to here? 360. So to find my reference angle, if this angle were 300 degrees, how would I find the reference angle? How would I find this angle? There we go. 360 minus theta, or 2 pi minus theta in radians. 
That's how we find our reference angles in the different quadrants. So what would, a, what would the reference angle of 125 be? Reference angle is 180 minus 125, which is 55 degrees. So instead of working with 125 degrees, I could work with 55 degrees and then adjust the, the plus and the minus of the trig functions as I needed to because what angle are we, or what quadrant are we in? Second quadrant, so we know that the x is negative and the y is positive. How about um, theta equals 5? First off, what units are we working in? Radians. We don't have a degree sign work, so we're working in radians. 5 radians is in which quadrant? Fourth. There are six, just over 6 radians in a circle. So this is going to be quadrant 4. So the reference angle is um, 2 pi minus 5, which is about uh, 2.83. So we'd have an angle of 2.83 radians. And the way that we're going to use these reference angles, the way they make your life simple, you don't have to use a reference angle but it can make your life easier. So let's look at an example of that. So let's say we want to find the sine of 210 degrees. And let's say I couldn't remember that 210 degrees was on my unit circle and I wanted to make my life easier. So I want to work with the reference angle. So what quadrant is 210 degrees in? Third quadrant. So my reference angle How do I find my reference angle in the third quadrant? 210 minus 180 which is 30 degrees. So now we can find the sine of 30 degrees first quadrant on my unit circle, what's the sine of 30 degrees? 30 degrees? We're in the first quadrant? So just, with your, you, I think you're a step ahead of me. So sine of 30 degrees is, is it, is it one half? Do we agree? Yeah? We're on our unit circle here, we're at uh, 30 degrees, the sine is the short side of this triangle, so sine of 30 is 1 half. Because we're in the third quadrant, sine of 210 degrees would be negative 1 half. And then let's do one in, let's do one in um, radians. Let's find the cosine the cosine of negative 5 pi over 4. Let's do a couple of things to make our lives easier here. Is cosine is cosine is a cosine function even or odd? Remember? Cosine is even. So cosine of negative 5 pi over 4 equals cosine of 5 pi over 4. What quadrant is 5 pi over 4 in? Third quadrant? So let's find our reference angle. In the third quadrant, how do we find our reference angle? Theta minus 
pi. So we're going to do 5 pi over 4 minus pi. How many fourths is pi? 4 pi over 4, which gives me pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4, that one's an easy one. Square root of 2 over 2 from our unit circle. And because we're in the third quadrant, cosine of negative 5 pi over 4 is going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. So this is, if you didn't remember that pi pi over 4, you couldn't remember how to find pi pi over 4, you can find the reference angle and just work with pi over 4. The other way you could do this on the unit circle is any multiple, any multiple of pi over 4, you can just work with pi over 4 and adjust for which quadrant you're in. Any multiple of pi over 3, you can use pi over 3 and adjust for um, which quadrant you're in. Any multiple pi over 6, you would you use pi over 6 and adjust just for which quadrant you're in. You want to make sure when you're working with pi over 6 that you don't end up at a multiple of pi over 3. You could end up with a multiple of pi over 3 because 6 and 3 are factors. Alright, questions on that? That's really all we were adding today is this idea of working anywhere in our coordinate plane and adjusting our problem for the length of the hypotenuse of our triangle and then putting a positive or negative on the trig functions as, as it's depending on which quadrant we're in. It's really all we added. Okay, our homework. EOE, every other even. There you go.